This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector glass display graphic that you see here on my screen. I'll be showing you how to make this without this logo here. I just put this logo on here to give you an idea of how something like this could be used. You could, uh, you know, use this for um, your portfolio or whatever. It just, it just adds a nice look to everything. So uh, let me get started here in Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is make sure the view is set to custom and then we'll zoom in at one to one. And then we're going to open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button. We're going to want Last Selected chosen from this drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. So the first thing we want to do is, since, since we're going to be working with a lot of whites and white gradients, we're going to want to change the background of the canvas here, because as it stands right now, it's white, and we're not going to really be able to get an idea of what we're doing if the background's white. So let's change the background to a darker shade by going to File, Document Properties, and we're going to click on this right here that says background. Just go ahead and click on that and this little window should come up. And I'm under the HSL tab here. I'm going to come over to the A row and bring that all the way to the right so it's not transparent. And I'll come over to the L row and I'll bring this about halfway through so it changes the background of the canvas to gray. Maybe something like that. That's pretty good. And we can close out of that. Close out of this. And we now have a dark gray or a light gray canvas. So uh, let's get started here. We're going to grab the rectangle tool and we'll click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle maybe about that width, that height and uh, we're gonna round the corners right here, go ahead and round the corner, grab that little handle and round that corner and I'm gonna convert this to a path by going to path object to path and then I'll go to path linked offset and I'm gonna turn that red and then I'm gonna grab this little node right here and I'm gonna pull this out about that much yeah, about that much, that's pretty good. And we can finalize that by going to Path, Object to Path. And we're gonna to wanna to make that white. And then we're gonna give this uh, an outline or a stroke. So hold Shift and click on, um, I'd say 50% gray right here to give that a stroke, an outline. And we'll come over to the Stroke Style tab. We just wanna make sure we have this at the right size. Mine is set to 11.9 because that's what I was using previously. So I'm gonna change this to two and see how that looks. You know what, I can't even see the stroke up against this background, so... Um, oops. Let me go over to the Stroke Paint tab and I'll make this I'll make this red for now just so I can see it. And I'll come back to the Stroke Style tab and I'm gonna make sure this is the right size. We'll go with two. We'll go with three. Yeah, I think three looks pretty good. And uh, you know what, let's go back to Document Properties. I'm gonna go to Document Properties and I'm just gonna darken the background of this. I'm gonna make this a little darker, maybe about that much. Almost black, so that's pretty good. Close out of that. And let's go to the strokes, uh, the Stroke Paint tab. And actually, let's zoom in on this over here. So let's press plus in the keyboard a few times. Whoops. Press plus in the keyboard a few times to zoom in. And we're gonna grab that object. And I wanna want make this red outline a shade of gray. So I'll come over to the 50% gray and I'm gonna hold shift and click on that to change the color of that to 50% gray. And then um, I'm going to come over to the Stroke Paint tab and I'm going to give this a linear gradient by clicking on that. And let me zoom out a little bit, press plus. And I'll press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. I'm going to put this stop up here at the top. And I'll take this stop and hold control and bring this to the bottom. I'll actually put this over here all the way to the left. Like that. And I'm gonna click on this top stop up here and I'm just gonna bring the opacity of that up. And um, let me zoom in on this a little bit. Let me double click that line right there to create a new stop, whoops. Okay, so we have our new stop right there. And let me double click this line again to create another stop. Let me zoom out a little. You can press plus and minus on the keyboard to zoom in and out or you can do what I'm doing which is holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. And I'm gonna take this stop and put this towards the middle. And I'll take this stop and put this towards the middle as well. And I'll click on this first one up here and under the Stroke Paint tab and under the HSL tab, I'm gonna come down to the A column and I'm gonna bring that down about in half. And same thing with this one. We'll click on this one down here, bring that down about in half. Then I'll click on this stop right here and I'm gonna make this one white. Then I'll bring the A column down about in half as well. Same thing right here, click on that stop. 
bring that uh, the L row all the way to the right to make that white, and I'll take the A, the A, co the A column, which is the um, the alpha transparency, and I'll bring that down about in half as well. That's pretty good. And let's go back to the uh, select tool, and we'll come over to the fill tab, and for the fill, I'm going to come down to the uh, the A row down here, and I'm going to bring this down about um, pretty far, maybe about that much. That's pretty good. So the next thing we want to do is um, let's click on the black rectangle and let's make this white. And we're going to give this a linear gradient as well. So let's click on the linear gradient tool, the button right there. And we'll press G on the keyboard to get back to the gradient tool. Click on this stop right here. Bring the opacity all the way to the right, all the way up. Double click this line right here to create a new, new stop right there towards the left. We're going to create another line, another stop right here to the right. So just double click that line. And then we'll click on that line and we're gonna make the um, the opacity of this, the A. We're gonna take the A and slide that all the way to the left. We want that at full, full opacity. Why is this not working? Okay. And then we'll go back to this stop over here and do the same thing. I swear it wasn't doing this when I was planning the tutorial. It decides to act all buggy when I'm trying to record, but oh well. Let's click on this stop right here, and we'll take the A column and bring this down in half as well. And click this one, bring this down as uh, down in half as well. Here we go with this again. Okay, that's pretty good, just like that. And we'll go back to the Select tool, and I'm going to duplicate this by hitting Control D. And I'll go back to the Gradient tool by pressing G on the keyboard, and I'll take this one, I'll take this stop and put this up here towards the top. And I'll hold control and grab this stop and put this straight down towards the bottom. Like that. Maybe I'll drag this down a little bit. I'll drag this up a little bit so it matches around. So you see the idea here. We're trying to create it so it's like a, almost like a glow going around the edges like that. And there's other ways to do this, but this is just how I chose to do this for this tutorial. So uh, we'll leave it at that. And um, that's pretty good. We'll press 1 on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. Let's duplicate that object by hitting Control D, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna turn this red for now so I can see it, and I'll bring the opacity down in half, and I'm gonna create a big ellipse going over the top half of this. So let's come over to the Circles and Ellipses tool, and I'm gonna click and drag to create an ellipse like that, and I'm gonna get rid of that outline by holding Shift and clicking on the X, and then we'll take the uh, the Select tool, and let me just turn this blue so you can see what I'm doing here. Let me bring this all the way up. And that's pr that's a pretty good shape and size right there. Once you have it like that, just hold shift and click on the red shape and center it on the vertical axis and go to path intersection. Then we could turn that white as well and bring the opacity of this one all the way down. Not not all the way, almost all the way, like at like 5%, something like that. That looks pretty good. And then uh, we're going to click on this larger rectangle here beneath it, and we'll duplicate that again by hitting Control D. And again, we're going to turn this red, bring the opacity down in half, and create another oval going over this thing. So let's come over to the squares, I mean, not the squares, the uh, circles and ellipses tool, and click and drag to create another oval like this. Turn this blue, go to the select tool, and I'm going to put this up here like that. And what we're paying attention to is the red, the red part sticking out from underneath the blue part. So this is the shape we're going to be, we're going to end up with. So you want to make sure you have it positioned like this. You don't want any, you don't want like the red part sticking out right there. You want that covered, and that's pretty good, just like that. And um, actually, no, a little more. All right, that's pretty good. And I'm going to hold Shift and click on the red shape and go to Path Difference. And I'll bring the opacity all the way up. I'm going to make this white. And then I'll give that a linear gradient with this tool right here. And let me press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And I'll put the darker shade up top. And I'll take the transparent shade and hold control and bring this down about that much. And then go back to the select tool. We're going to want to uh, bring the opacity of this down a lot. Maybe about that much. About 20%. That's pretty good. And then let's duplicate that by hitting Control D on the keyboard and flip this vertically and horizontally. And then hold Shift and click on this square right here, that rectangle in the middle. And we're going to align the bottom edges and align the right sides. And then we can click off of it to deselect everything. 
So the next step would be to create these little rivets you see here in the corner. So uh, let's go and create those. Let's zoom in on this top left corner over here. I'll just press plus in the keyboard a few times to get there. And we'll grab the circles and ellipses tool. Hold control and shift and click and drag to create a circle. Maybe about that big. And go back to the select tool. Let's bring the opacity of this all the way up. And we'll give this a linear gradient as well. Press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. Click on that stop, bring the opacity all the way up. And then let's put this stop at the top here and then take this stop and hold control and bring this to the bottom straight down like that. And we'll double click the line right there to create a new stop and double click the line right there to create another stop. And I'll take this second stop from the top over here and I'll take the L column and I'll slide this down. I'll slide this about um, maybe about to about 173. That's pretty good. Then I'll take this one, the next one down, and I'll slide that even further to make that darker. Maybe about that much. That's pretty good. Then we'll go back to the select tool. Uh, let me hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate that. And we'll turn this one 50% uh, gray. And then hold Control and Shift on the keyboard and just scale it in a little bit. Maybe about that much. And I'm actually going to zoom in on this a little more so I can get a better view of what I'm doing. I'll just press plus on the keyboard once. Maybe a second time. That's pretty good. And we're going to give this a linear gradient as well. So let's click on linear gradient. Press G on the keyboard for the gradient tool. Click on this stop. Bring the opacity all the way up. And then take the L column and slide that all the way to the right to make that white. And we'll put this one up here. And hold control and take this stop and put this down here. And then I'll take the select tool. Let's click on this larger circle behind it and duplicate that by hitting control D. And we'll turn that black and then hold control on the keyboard and just click and drag it down a little bit. Maybe about that much. And then I'll lower that two steps. One, two. And I'll bring the opacity down a little bit just so it looks like it's casting a little bit of a shadow. And then uh, let's click off of it to deselect and I'll press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% and see how that looks. All right, that looks all right. Maybe, um, maybe I'll bring this shadow, I'll bring that down a little more so you can actually see it when we're zoomed out. Um, that should be good. All right, that's good enough. And now let's click and drag over that object, that, that all three of those objects we just created, and group them together. And hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it, and then hold Control and bring this one over to the right. And then we'll hold Shift and click on this one, and we'll group them together, and hit Control D on the keyboard to duplicate them, and then hold Control and just click and drag these down to here. And then hold Shift and click on. Uh, the top set of circles and we'll group them all together and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the uh, the rectangle right here and we're just going to make sure that's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis that's pretty good we click off of that to deselect everything and I think that's it unless I missed anything I think that covers everything and uh, now that we're done you can click and drag over the whole thing and group it together and you could even uh, go and grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle and drop that beneath it, lower to the bottom, and you can see, let me turn that red, you can see it's got that transparency like glass. So that's how you can create that using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.